welcome to Shankar's daily newspaper analysis. Before starting today's discussion, I have an important announcement. Shankar AS Academy is conducting a prelims test series known as pre storming which is going to start on 21st of November. You can enroll in this test series by clicking the link given below in the description. Also added to that, we have a current affairs test series known as Chakra which is going to start from 12th of November. You can enroll in this current affairs test series to enrich your knowledge. So, here is the list of articles that we are going to discuss. In the first article discussion, we will discuss about the right to life in a pollution free environment and in the second discussion, you will see about the El Nino from the prelims perspective and in the third article discussion, you will see what is the recent judgment regarding the minority status which is given to the Aligarh Muslim University. Without further delay, let us get into today's discussion. Take a look at this news article. This news article is taken from the Hindu newspaper. Let me explain the crux of the article first. The Supreme Court of India has said that no religion is encouraging the polluting activities, especially with mentioning about the bursting of firecrackers during very special events. This is going to harm the public health. The court has also said about that fundamental right, which is to live in a pollution free environment, and this right to live in a pollution free environment is a part of the right of citizens to live in a healthy conditions. So, what we have to learn from the prelims perspective is that we have to learn about the right to life in a pollution free environment and we have to also learn about the right to health. Let us see in this discussion. The first thing you have to understand is that the, this right to life in a pollution free environment is a part of the article 21 which is to live in a Article 21, which is right to life with dignity and personal liberty. Through various judgments, the judiciary has expanded this interpretation of the particular Article 21 and we will see the two judgments with respect to the right to life in a pollution-free environment. The first case is the MC Mehta versus the Union of India case. This case happened in the year 1987. What the Supreme Court said on this case is the importance of maintaining the ecological balance which is necessary for the survival of humanity. Here, maintaining the ecological balance is the key judgment which was given by the Supreme Court. And the next case is that the Subhash Kumar versus the state of Bihar case and this case happened in the year 1991. And what the Supreme Court said on this case is that the right to life is also going to include the right of citizens to enjoy a pollution free water and air from this judgment the right to life in a pollution free environment evolved eventually. Along with this we also have the NGT which is the National Green Tribunal. This is nothing but it is a specialized judicial body which is in India and this judicial body is designed to dedicately and this judicial body is specifically designed to handle the environment cases specifically. The main role of this National Green Tribunal is to enforce all the environmental laws which are there to protect the rights of citizens to live in a clean environment. The article 48A says that the state has to protect and improve the environment, but DPSP is non-justiciable even then this article is going to support the recognition of a pollution free environment which is essential for every citizen to lead a quality life. This is what you have to understand about the right to life in a pollution free environment. Now we will see what is right to health. Similar to the previous right, this right to health is also coming under the article 21. And the Supreme Court has clarified that this right to health is an essential part of the life because to live a quality life, health is very important. Also added to that, it is the responsibility of the state to provide a quality healthcare facility. Now we will see what are the case which are respect to this right to health. First, we have the Pashim Banga Kate Mazdur Samiti, which is the state of West Bengal case. This case happened in the year 1996. The judgment of this case is that it is the duty of the states to provide a timely medical treatment. And the next case we have is that the state of Punjab, this is the Mohinder Singh Chawla case in the year 1997. In this case, the Supreme Court said that the right to health is also a part of right to life and personal liberty and it is the duty of the government to provide the basis healthcare services. 
and only based on these many healthcare policies are initiated by the state government as well as the central government and uh, we have sanitation measures various healthcare schemes such as the Aishman Bharat to make the healthcare accessible to all the sections of the society. Added to that, we also have the 73rd constitutional amendment and the 74th constitutional amendments, which will empower the local bodies such as municipalities and panchayat to specifically focus on the healthcare services because it is essential to live a sustainable community development. So, these are the things we have covered in this discussion. First is the right to health and previously we discussed about the right to life in a pollution free environment. With this knowledge, let us see a prelims practice question. Which of the following article in the DPSP promotes the environmental protection in India? The answer is simple. Option B, 48A is the correct answer. With this, we will conclude the discussion on this article and now let us move on to the next one. Look at this article from the Hindu newspaper. Let us understand why it is in the news first. Previously, in the year 1967, there was a case known as the Aziz Basha versus the Union of India case. In that case, the judiciary did not give the minority status to the AMU, which is the Aligarh Muslim University. But in the recent judgment, which happened in the November 8, 2024, the Supreme Court has overturned their previous decision. What we have to understand from this article is that first we have to understand uh, about the AMU, how it was formed, the basics, a few basics about that. Then we will learn the minority status. We will specifically discuss about the article 30 and we will see the recent judgment and what are the implications of it. Let us start the discussion now. So, during the colonial time, there was a Muslim social reformer known as the Sir Syed Ahmad Khan. He believed that a modern education along with the Islamic values will definitely develop the situation of the Muslim people. For that reason, he established a college known as the Mohammedan Anglo Oriental College in the year 1875. Later, this uh, college was transformed into the Aligarh Muslim University based on a parliamentary law or a parliamentary act called as the Aligarh Muslim University of 1920. By this act, the college became the university. But in the year 1961, in the case as already said, Asis Basha case, the Supreme Court said that the minority status cannot be given to this uh, university. Let us see why. The court said that this uh, Aligarh Muslim University cannot be considered as a part of minority institution under the article 30 because even though it was established by a Muslim community to uh, develop themselves, it was established by the intervention of the government based on the parliamentary act of Aligarh Muslim University Act 1920. Because of this reason, the judiciary denied the minority status to the Aligarh Muslim University. Since it was created by the government, it did not meet the criteria which is required to give the minority status to this particular university. But in the recent judgment, which happened in the date no November 8, 2024, the Supreme Court has said that any institution which was established before the constitution was adopted, that is they have uh, given a dateline that is November 26, 1949, any institution which is formed before this date, which was primarily established to benefit a specific community, even though it is uh, involving a state uh, involvement or not, it will be given a minority status. This is the judgment given in the recent judgment. The court has also said that any institution which is established to serve a particular community, specifically to address their educational needs, should be eligible for the minority status which is offered by the government. They also said that any state intervention or any legislative act such as in this case, it should not strip the institution for giving their minority character. This is the judgment given in the recent judgment. Now we will see what are the implications because of this. Because of this judgment, they will have a greater autonomy in admission policies, especially it will allow to prioritize the Muslim students and develop their socio-economic background which is the main aim of main intention of the establishment of this particular university and this will also align with the historical mission which is the goal to uplift the Muslim community in the educational background 
and in the Indian constitution, the minority status is specifically referring to the rights and privileges of individual, which is granted mainly to the religious and the linguistic minorities. This status is specifically mentioned in the article 29 and 30 of the Indian constitution, which is giving the cultural and educational rights of the minorities. So, with respect to this, you have to understand about the article 30, which is the right granted by the constitution to all the minorities to establish and administer a educational institution. This is important because they have to meet the cultural and educational rights of them. Similarly, we also have article 30 clause 2 which ensures that the government will not discriminate against any educational institution which is run by the minority while providing the grant in aids. This is the basic thing you have to understand about these articles. With this, we will conclude the discussion. In this discussion, we saw about the recent judgment which uh, altered or overturned the previous judgment. We also saw what are the implications of the judgment. With this, let us see a prelims practice question. In India, if a religious sect or community is given the status of national minority, what are the special advantages entitled to them? The correct answer would be option 1 and 3. Option 2 is incorrect, it is not given. With this, we will conclude the discussion on this article and now let us move on to the next one. Take a look at this article. This article is discussing about the report which is given by the WMO, which is the World Meteorological Organization. They have said that the year 2024 is going to be the warmest year on record with the temperature recording for about 1.54 degrees Celsius, which is above the pre-industrial level. And this report was named as the Statement of Climate Report 2024 and it was released in the COP29 which is the Conference of Party 29 and what this report says is that the reason for the warmest temperature record is primarily because of the El Nino. What we have to learn from the prelims perspective is about the El Nino. So, let us start the discussion. Before understanding about the El Nino, we have to understand about a concept called as the Walker cell. So, usually the central Pacific Ocean heats up because of the solar insulation which is going to be high at the equator and we have the trade winds or the tropical easterly which blows from the west to the east direction and the warmed up air which is located in the central Pacific Ocean will be carried away or be pushed away from the central Pacific Ocean towards the west that is towards the Asia and this will lead to the heating up of the region surrounding in this. So, because of this heating up, the air will rise up because of the convection and because of the convection, the air rises up, forms the clouds and the rain will be there. So, th because of this phenomenon, there will be a wet condition in this region. Similarly, we will have a cold condition or the cold ocean currents in the region that is in the eastern Pacific Ocean. This will be the normal effect of the Walker cell. How this happens first? So, here is the central Pacific Ocean. The cold ocean current will flow from towards the west and the air will rise here and there will be a formation of cloud. We will have the rain and after that the air will go towards the east and it will come in contact with the cold air in the troposphere region and then the air will sink up which is leading to the formation of cold condition in this region. So, there will be a high temperature, low pressure in the western Pacific region and there will be a low temperature, high pressure in this condition leading to wet condition in the western Pacific Ocean and dry condition in the eastern Pacific Ocean. This is called as the Walker circulation and with respect the circulation will continuous cells throughout the Pacific Ocean and we also will have a higher pressure in the Indian Ocean because of this Walker cell effect. So, if you have a clear understanding of this, let us now move on to the El Nino effect. So, what will happen in the El Nino is that the trade winds which is causing the push of the warm ocean water in the central Pacific to the western side, the because of the weakening of the trade winds, it will be pushed towards the eastern Pacific Ocean and the cold ocean current in the eastern Pacific Ocean is replaced with the warm ocean currents and this 
warm ocean currents in the eastern pacific ocean will lead to the convection in this region and the clouds will be formed and there will be a wet condition in the eastern pacific region this is called as the el nino effect but it has a various impact on the various part of the world let us discuss that eventually so you can have a look of this image they have compared the normal walker cell and the el nino you can pause and take a look of it now we will see the impacts of el nino firstly as already discussed, there is a warming up of Eastern Pacific Ocean. There is also impact on the weather patterns of various parts. Firstly, in the Southern America region, there is a increased rainfall and flooding, especially along the West Coast and countries like Peru and Ecuador also face high flooding. Talking about the Western Pacific region, that is in the Australia and the Southern East region, it is drier than the normal condition and it can lead to droughts and the increased risk of wildfires in the El Nino season. Talking about India, during the neutral phase, there will be high pressure and this high pressure is replaced with the comparatively low pressure in the Indian Ocean region. This can lead to the effect of monsoon in the El Nino season. Only when there is high pressure in the Indian Ocean, the winds can move from the Indian Ocean to the low pressure region in India. But if there is low pressure in this region, the wind cannot move from Indian Ocean to India and there will be no monsoon in India. This is how the monsoon will be affected in case of El Nino. There is also a global rise in temperature because as the ocean warms up, it releases more heat into the atmosphere and it will cause a rise in temperature which is mentioned in the news article. It is also going to impact the marine life because the warm water will disrupt the nutrient circulation in the ocean and it can severely affect the population of fishes in that which will eventually impact the fishing industry and the food supplies. And lastly, we have the economic and the environmental effects. El Nino will affect the agriculture, water resources and the energy demand by worldwide because the extreme weather conditions which is associated with this phenomena can lead to crop failures, water shortage and increased energy usage for purpose of cooling as well as heating which is causing a major economic impact to the various nations. And you also have to note that this El Nino happens every 2 to 7 years and it will last for about 9 to 12 months. So, these are the basics you have to understand about the El Nino from the prelims perspective. Now, with this knowledge, let us see a prelims practice question. The question is, consider the following, weakening trade winds, 2 warmer western Pacific, 3 increase in the global temperature. How many are the above are the impacts of El Nino? So, the first statement, weakening trade winds is the correct answer because that is the reason for the El Nino effect. Then second answer we have the warmer western Pacific. This is not the condition during the El Nino, the eastern Pacific will be warmer and this will be incorrect. And third we have an increase in the global temperature which is right. So, the correct answer will be 2 only. With this, we will conclude the discussion on this article. We have come to end of today's video. If you found the video informative, hit like, give your feedbacks as comment and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Have a nice day.